Hello and hope you enjoyed that little video. I shot it with just the Insta360 ONE RS and a selfie stick, no other gear. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you about how I worked with the ONE RS to get the best image possible. Before we go further, I do wanna say that this is a sponsored video by Insta360, but my opinion of the camera is still my own and of course the images don't lie. Let's get into the settings first. Starting with the 4K boost lens, which is what I used for most of the Chicago video. First of all, let's go into the general menu and reduce that sharpening all the way down. Digital sharpening is the quickest way to ruin your image and make it look like a phone. Then I set my stabilization level to high, but actually I'm not sure if this makes a difference. I always record so that I stabilize it in post, so I'm not sure if adjusting the stabilization level in camera actually makes a difference anymore, but I just set it to high anyway. Then I go into regular video mode, not active HDR, because the regular video mode seems to be sharper with less shadow noise. And active HDR doesn't let you lock in your exposure settings. In video mode, I choose 4K resolution at 24 frames per second because 24p is the proper frame rate for filmmaking. I use the four by three aspect ratio because it allows me to crop in a bit if I'm going to be delivering a 16 by nine video. Shooting in a four by three frame is really, really helpful when you just need a little bit more headroom or a little more room at the bottom of the frame. You can shift the image up or shift it down. Or if you wanna roll your horizon in post, it helps to have a little bit more headroom and a little bit more room at the bottom. Then I set my color to standard, not vivid, not log. Vivid is too saturated for my tastes and log just doesn't work right with 8-bit footage, in my opinion. Next, I adjust my shutter, my ISO, and my white balance for each shot. You could make life easier just by using auto for everything, but then you'd see all those elements shifting during the shot while you shoot, so it would look more vloggy and less filmic because when they're shooting a professional movie, obviously they're not using auto ISO or auto shutter. So here's how to do that. I go into manual mode, and I use the little screen on the ONE RS to judge the exposure. I could use the Insta360 app to have a bigger screen, but it does take some time to connect to the app each time you wanna use it, and that slows me down when I'm just running around with the camera grabbing shots, so I usually don't use the app, I just eyeball it. To adjust my exposure, I start by setting the ISO to 100, the base ISO, then I adjust my shutter to expose for the highlights, meaning I expose a little bit darker to keep the bright parts from blowing out. Blown highlights will ruin the cinematic look right away. Quick note about shutter, you usually don't want to go below 1 50th shutter speed no matter how dark the scene is. If you're shooting at 24 frames per second, your shutter is supposed to be locked at double the frame rate, so that would be 1 over 50 because 50 is roughly double of 24. 
This is because you get the proper motion blur at 150. That's where the motion blur looks normal. It looks like it would look during a movie. Now, of course, this rule gets broken all the time when we're shooting with action cameras because faster shutter means better stabilization with less blurry artifacts, and also you need to increase the shutter speed just to make the scene darker if it's too bright. But when the light gets lower and you need to choose between a slower shutter speed and a higher ISO, I go with the higher ISO. High shutter speed for more stabilization in bright environments, 1 50th shutter in low light, then I just boost the ISO as needed. For white balance, I use 5500K on sunny days, 6000 for cloudy days, 4500 or 4000K for mixed light, and 3200 to 3800 for artificial tungsten light and nighttime. Doing all these manual settings is a bit inconvenient, so here's one little hack I use for doing the manual settings a bit faster. I switch to auto mode, then I switch right back to manual mode, and this locks in the settings that the auto mode has chosen. Then I adjust the manual settings to my taste. Okay, on to the 360 lens. For the 360 lens, there's not a whole lot of difference in the settings. Sharpness low, regular video mode, not HDR, 5.7K, 24P, manual exposure, and that hack of switching over to auto and then switching back to manual, that works for the 360 lens as well. But because it's tricky to expose for a 360 image, I do sometimes leave it in full auto when I'm shooting 360, especially in situations where the light is changing a lot or I'm moving through mixed lighting. And I will sometimes use HDR when I'm dealing with too much dynamic range in the scene, but it is a last resort. Okay, those are my settings. Now let's talk about my shooting process. Everything you saw in the Chicago video was shot with just the 1RS and a selfie stick, no gimbals, no other accessories. The way I see it, if you're gonna use a gimbal, you might as well go with a bigger camera as well because it's not gonna fit in your pocket anymore. The whole point of using action cameras is portability and flexibility. So for this video, I just used Insta360's tiny selfie stick or I went handheld because that's what fits in my pocket. So how did I get smooth shots with no mechanical stabilizer at all? Well, it's a combination of the in-camera flow state stabilization and the way I move my body. Proper body movement is really important whether you're shooting handheld or with a gimbal. I actually have a whole film school course explaining my movement techniques. There's a link in the description if you're interested, but I will give you a quick breakdown of how that works here. First, I try to walk as smoothly as possible, like I'm holding a full glass of water and I'm trying not to spill it. This is called the ninja walk. Second, I ease in and out of each movement so that it has a nice gliding feel. Then I let the flow state stabilization handle the rest of the little jitters and the end result is a nice smooth shot. So that's how I get smooth movements in my shots. The next important decision is the framing of the shot. Choosing the right kinds of subjects and the right angles is also crucial for making action camera shots look good because you can't zoom in. So obviously you need to take advantage of that wide angle perspective. So for this video, I avoided distant subjects with no foreground elements in the shot because that's boring. Instead, I mostly did shots where there was some interesting subject within about one meter of the camera. I also tried to film subjects that were in some sort of direct light or spotlight that separated them from the background. This is because I had no depth of field blur in the background because it's a wide angle action camera. So I had to use light instead to separate my subject from its environment. Also, the dynamic range on the One RS is good, but it's not as good as a cinema camera or a mirrorless camera would be. So I didn't want to try to pull too much detail from the shadows in post. Instead, I chose my lighting very carefully to avoid putting my subjects in the dark parts of the shot. And to add a sense of motion and energy to my shots, I filmed a lot of subjects that were either moving toward the camera or moving away from the camera. This is because wide angle lenses exaggerate movement on that axis, moving toward or away from the camera. They make it look like that movement's going faster. So this makes the shots more exciting. One good thing about shooting with an action camera like the One RS is that I didn't really have to worry about getting too much water or sand on the lens. So that allows me to do riskier shots, such as this shot during the spike ball game where I laid down the camera in the sand under the net. The selfie stick was my only accessory that I used here. I used it of course for selfies and I also used it for high angles, low angles, and going through small spaces. When I filmed with the selfie stick, I would often set my framing using the Insta360 Go app. This is one time when it was really useful to spend that time to connect the app. Mainly, I just used the app when I couldn't see the camera's screen and I needed some other way to frame my shot. The app connects wirelessly to the camera and it gives you a real-time preview and it also gives you playback of your takes and you have access to the camera settings. 
There is a bit of delay with the app and the resolution isn't super high, but it's perfectly adequate for getting your framing before you hit record. Okay, now I'll just quickly talk about how I processed my One RS footage in post. I used Insta360 Studio, which is the desktop app, not the mobile one. First, I imported my clips. Then under FOV or field of view options, I chose FPV. This gives me straight lines instead of the fisheye look and it doesn't zoom in too much on my image. I don't use the linear or narrow settings because they crop in too much on the image, which increases the visible noise and reduces the sharpness. I can always crop it later and get exactly the same effect. For my 360 shots, I did all of my reframing in the Insta360 Studio app instead of my editing program, DaVinci Resolve, because Resolve has no built-in 360 camera support, and there's not even a good third-party plugin if you're using a Mac. The only good plugin that I know of is for PC. I'm not gonna do a full reframing tutorial here because you can learn how those controls work uh, just by watching the tutorial videos on Insta360's channel, but I will talk a little bit about how I removed lens distortion, which is you know the fisheye look. I manually adjusted the field of view and the distortion correction separately, and I just sort of played around with them for each shot and juggled them to get the maximum field of view with the least stretching on the edges of the image. And that can actually change depending on the shot you're doing, uh, depending on what's in the shot, how distorted things are at the corners. So for each shot, I just tried to maximize how wide I could go because that uses more pixels and it makes the image look sharper. And I tried to minimize the amount of stretching at the edges of the image. Then I just added those keyframes for movement and I used the easing curves to smooth out each shot. You have a couple of different options for the type of curve that it applies to your movement. In other words, the way that it smooths your movement. And I think I always used fade in and fade out for each shot. Then when I pre-rendered my shots out of Insta360 Studio, I chose to render them in ProRes 422 because that is the highest quality format. Okay, what about color grading? Well, I didn't use Insta360's Color Plus because it was way too intense. And I didn't grade too much in Resolve either because I think the colors mostly look fine straight out of the camera. And it's 8-bit, so you can't really push it too far. Mostly, I just raised the shadows a bit. So what you saw in the video was almost exactly how the raw footage looked straight out of the camera. Finally, I added some digital motion blur with the Real Smart Motion Blur plugin because when you use a high shutter speed like I did during the daytime, you don't have any motion blur naturally in your shot. So it looks a little bit more vloggy, a little bit less cinematic that way. I wanted that motion blur, so I added it digitally. It doesn't work perfectly, but if you play around with the settings of Real Smart Motion Blur, you can usually get acceptable results. Okay, so that's how I made this little video with the Insta360 ONE RS. It really is a beast of a camera in a tiny package, and I have found the image good enough to use in my other productions as well. It's a great little crash cam, action cam, POV cam, camera to throw on a stick and get high shots if you can't fly a drone. It's really versatile for grabbing that shot that you couldn't get with your bigger camera. So thank you Insta360 for sponsoring this video, and thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what you see, and I'll see you next time.